Hello class and welcome back. Today we shall see the ODMG object model and the object definition language. First of all, let us see what is ODMG and its standard. A consortium of ODMS vendors and users called ODMG, that is Object Data Management Group, proposed a standard that is known as ODMG 93 or ODMG 1.0 standard. All right. This consortium, it means a group of individuals or associations or organization coming together, right, to achieve a common goal or objective, All right? It proposed a standard for object model initially known as the ODMG 93 or ODMG 1.0 standard and later on was revised to ODMG 2.0 and then uh, at present and presently ODMG 3.0. The standard is made up of several parts, including the object model, the ODL and OQL, as well as the bindings to object-oriented programming languages. All right, we shall follow the ODMG 3.0 object model here, and it is important to note that many of the ideas embodied in the ODMG object model are based on two decades of research into conceptual modeling and object databases by many researchers. Let us see the overview of the object model of ODMG. All right. According to, o according to the ODMG standard, we define the ODMG model, object model as the data model upon which the object the definition language and object query language are based. It is meant to provide a standard data model for object databases. Just as SQL describes a standard data model for relational databases, we will see about this in the upcoming videos. All right. Here, it also provides a standard terminology in a field where the same terms were sometimes used to describe different concepts. Now, let us see what are objects and literals. Objects and literals are the basic building blocks of the object model. And the only difference between these two is that an object has both an object identifier and a state or a value, whereas literal has only a value but no object identifier. The object state can change over time by, modifi by modifying the object's value. That is, an object state can undergo modification. However, a literal can undergo modification and it always possesses a constant value even though if it has a complex structure. All right, these are the five aspects of an object and they are identifier, name, lifetime, structure and creation. An object identifier must be unique and each and every object must have an object identifier, unlike literal. Please remember the difference between these two is that an object has an object identifier whereas the literal lacks an object identifier. The next aspect of an object is that it has a name, right? And this name must be unique, also, but also it can have more than one name. But, kind, but please note down that object name can have, I mean, an object can have two or three names, all right? However, it will only have a unique or one unique identifier, object identifier, right? Then we'll see the lifetime. The lifetime of an object is specified, is specified when mm, whether it is a persistent object or a transient object, right? The lifetime are independent of types. That is, some objects of a particular type may be transient, whereas others may be persistent. Mm -hmm. I'll just remind you that persistent objects are those type of objects which will exist in a program or a database even if the program has been terminated. Whereas a transient object, the lifetime of a transient object is temporary. That is, that is, it would only exist in a program as long as the program is executing or is still going on. However, it will disappear once the program has been terminated. All right. Then I'll move on to the structure. The structure of an object specifies how the object is constructed by using the type constructors. As we have seen earlier in the previous video, 
what are these type constructors and how they influence the structure of the object. The structure specifies whether an object is atomic or not. Okay, that is whether it is atomic or a collection object. Right? If an object is not atomic, then it will be composed of other, other objects, for example, a collection object, since its state value will be collection of other objects. That is a combination of two or more than two objects. In the OGMG model, an atomic object is an individual or user-defined objects, and all the values of the basic, basic built-in data types are considered to be literals. Then the creation. The creation refers to the manner in which an object can be created. This is typically accomplished via an operation new for a special object factory interface. All right, let us see what are literals again. In the object model, a literal is a value that does not have an object identifier. However, the value may have a simple or complex structure. There are three types of literals that is atomic, structured and collection. Atomic literals are user defined or they are the values of basic data types and the basic data types of the object model include long, short, unsigned integer numbers and so on as you can see here. And like the floating point floating point numbers these are the decimal numbers the boolean values plus minus or and or not then single characters char and character character strings strings and enumeration types in a, among others the structured literals these include the date interval time and time span and these are constructed using the tuple constructor Lastly, the collection literals, these specify a literal value that is a collection of objects or values, but the collection itself does not have an object ID. All right. Please remember, a literal will lack an object identifier or an object ID. The collection in the object object, object model can be defined by the type generators such as set, bag, list, and array, and another collection type known as the dictionary, which is a collection of the association between the key, the association of keys and values. All right, the keys is a unique search value here, just like your uh, ID number, Aadhaar number, voters ID. All right, each of these numbers are unique. All right, and these can be used as a key, which, uh, which is a unique search value and associated with a value V used to, and it can be used to create an index on a collection of values v the notation of odmg uses three concepts here interface literal and class how do we uh, how do we display the object uh, object model all right this will be via an interface literal and class interface specifies only behavior of an object type and is typically non instantiable that is, no objects are created corresponding to an interface. All right. Although an interface may have state properties such as attributes and relationship as parts of its specification, these cannot be inherited from the interface. All right. It can only display the properties such as the attributes and relationships as well as the operation, but they cannot in, but inheritance cannot take cannot take place in the interface all right then we'll move on to the class the class specifies both attribute and behavior of an object type and is instantiable all right that means that means by instantiable we mean that inheritance can take place Hence, database and application objects are typically created based on the user specified class declarations that form a database schema. And finally, a literal declaration specifies states but no behavior. All right, a literal will declare only the value but will not have a behavior or the operation. A literal instance holds a simple or complex structured value but has neither an object identifier nor encapsulated operations. Next, we'll move on to inheritance in the object model of ODMG. Right? 
There are two types of inheritance here, such as behavior only inheritance and estate plus behavior inheritance. Behavior inheritance is also known as ISA or interface inheritance and is specified by the column notation. Right here in the ODMG object model, behavior inter inheritance requires the supertype to be an interface, whereas the, sub whereas the subtype could be either a class or another interface. Please remember in behavior inheritance, the supertype here will be the parent interface where the subtype could either be a class or another interface. In the other inheritance relationship called extend in inheritance is specified by the keyword extend. It is used to inherit both state and behavior strictly among classes, only among classes, right? Not between one interface and another, but only with among behavior and state in a particular interface. So both the supertype and the subtype must be classes as we will see later. All right. In another example. So we will show about we will show this in another, in one example. I will show you later. So multiple inheritance via extend is not permitted. However, multiple inheritance is allowed for behavior inheritance via the column notation. Mm -hmm. Suppose if there are multiple inheritance, um, multiple inheritance will not be will not be allowed by the state plus behavior inheritance type. However, it will only allowed by the behavior inheritance by using the, the colon notation. Hence, an interface may inherit behavior from several other interfaces. A class may also inherit behavior from several interfaces via colon notation. And in addition to inheriting behavior and state from at most other class via extend. Then we shall move on to built-in interfaces and classes in object model. All right. Here in the object model, there is a distinction between the collection object and the atomic object. All right, collection object has contains a state with multiple objects or literals, whereas the atomic object, the state is an individual object or literal. Collection object inherit the basic collection interface, which will be shown in figure C. And it shows all the operations for all collection objects. This is figure C. You will see here the collection interface and the operations in the, of the collection objects. When you see that word void there, right? When you see adjacent to the word void there, that will show the operation, such as insert element, remove element next position, reset, etc. These will all be the operations all right, involved in, these, in this interface collection. All right, an interface list, interface array. All right, these are array list. These are all collection objects. Now we'll move on to atomic or user-defined objects. In the object model, any user-defined object that is not a collection object is called, is called an atomic object. We shall see these two examples in figure 11.7, that is employee and department class. All right. And here we shall see the attributes and relationships as well as the operations involved in these two, between these two classes. Right here, class employee. It has a key here, SSN. All right, we can use the SSN as a key. All right, this SSN can be used as a unique search value. All right, when we suppose now you want to search a specific employee, you can just type the SSN or the ID number. Right, then you will get the detail of a particular person. Okay. Then here attribute string attribute are the attributes of an employee class are name, SSN, birth date, sex, age, and the relationship here will be with the class with the class department. 
and the relationship here works for in the department all right the operation here is void or i mean sorry reassigned employee all right here this is the explanation for those figures all right here in figure 11.7 the attributes for employee are name ssn birth date sex and age and those for department are d name all right d name d number location projects all right the manager and projects attribute of department have complex structure and defined via struct which correspond to the double constructor the value of manager in each department object have two components that is manager whose value is an object id that reference to the employee object that manages the department start date whose value is a date the location attribute of department is defined via the set constructor since each department object can have a set of locations. Also, and that one relationship exists that relates each employee to the department in which he or she works, that is the work for relationship of employee. This one works for relationship with the department, that is relationship between the employee and department is works for all right in the inverse direction each department is related to the set of employees that works in the department and has employee relationship of department the keyword inverse specifies that these two properties define a single conceptual relationship in inverse directions all right Also, by specifying inverse, the database system can maintain the referential integrity of the relationship automatically. That is, if the value of works for, for a particular employee E refers to department D, then the value of has employees for department D must include a reference to E in its set of employee reference. All right. The example is the manager component of the manager attribute in department. In addition to attributes and relationship, we can also see operations here in these two object types. And it has a number of operation signatures which specify the object name, operation name, sorry, its argument types and its return value if applicable. Operation names are unique within each object type, but they can be overloaded by having the same operation name appear in distinct object types. The operation signatures can also specify the names of exceptions that can occur during operation execution. The implementation of the operation include the code to raise this exception. When you, you can see here, all right, see adjacent to that word void, you can see that reassign employee. That is an operation in the class employee. G assign employee that means you can add or remove an employee all right and another operation or operations here will be add employee or change the manager or change the name of the manager all right all right that is all for now odl and oql will be discussed in the next video so Thank you very much and have a nice day.